Okay, um, I will uh, make a video that I will improvise, but uh, I know broadly uh, what I would like to to share. Uh, I will talk about empiricism um, because. Uh, one of the main uh, <clears throat> um, feature of my life um, is that I haven't had many conversations with what I call empirical individuals that which we call usually human beings over the past uh, 13 years basically uh, but before I start, uh, I said this uh, to myself that I would not recommend uh, my, my, my video, my, my introductory lecture on logic, the previous video that I posted, which is really the, the most uh, basic um, illustration of, um, of logic and um, also the previous video about uh, the elites and uh, the new world order, uh, the links and uh, the commentary are made um, available. Uh, so I will I will recommend uh, from now on I will recommend um, my, my 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 video my lecture on on logic because it's really the the um, the most accessible. Uh, while being still relatively rigorous that I could produce or that I can produce as of now. So, yeah. Okay, it's been two minutes, so it's been very... Basically, what I would like to say is that um, I, I, have, I am not used to talking to ordinary people. But over the past few months, I've had a few opportunities and each time that I have talked to uh, an empirical person, namely a human being, a, a normal human being, uh, I, um, I learn a lot about reality and over the past few years I have experienced what is usually called a cognitive dissonance. It has happened to me on numerous occasions. I keep experiencing cognitive uh, dissonances. Namely, I, I, um, I tend to overestimate other people's intelligence or to underestimate my own intelligence because on an empirical level I experience myself as being kind of dumb on many topics because I am ignorant and I compare my knowledge with the standards of minimum PhDs and eventually uh, even uh, scientific uh, uh, geniuses like uh, I, I experience myself as being dumb, for instance, because if I try to, to read a Newton, uh, I would need to focus a lot, uh, I would not understand everything, it's, it's very complicated, so that's one example, but whatever. So I keep, uh, I keep uh, deluding myself in a way or, or or experiencing on an empirical level cognitive dissonance in a sense that uh, here I will talk uh, in ordinary language the video that I made about logic uh, that I posted uh, uh, I think a couple of days ago uh, I I thought that 
and I still think that I cannot I cannot simplify um, more what I'm trying to share basically that uh, Uh, how, how should I explain this? Uh, I made a video a few weeks ago, um, The Light of the Eternal Sun, where I, I presented what I consider to be the totality of being, uh, which is, uh, it's not the totality of being, it's the totality of being, becoming conscious of itself, that would be the formal definition of God. And I this um this video uh, it's in a way uh, I just used the the structure of the works of Hegel so in a way it's not really work I just copied uh, Hegel but it's nonetheless uh, work in a sense that my, my commentary was not uh, especially great in the sense that I improvised. I remember I, I did not took notes, so it was improvisation. I, I rewatched uh, this video a few times because uh, it helped, but basically the, the structure, the presentation, the commentary, the simplification, it was really the best that I could offer, I, I thought so. Um, given the circumstances, Whenever I, I posted it, I think it was uh, at the beginning of August, a few weeks ago. So, and I, I expected that this video would uh, would become eventually very successful because I, I presented the totality of being. So, in my mind, here I, I explain this to myself. I I cannot. I could not. Now I understand better, but I could not understand how people could not be interested in at least some aspects of the totality of being. Uh, and um, I also made, uh, even a few months ago, videos about being, nothing, becoming, which were then the best video that I could produce on an intellectual level. So basically, uh, in in uh, some of my videos, or, or maybe most of my videos, I talk about the categories. And what I have learned, here, uh, the, the, the way I talk, is, it will be quite confused, but uh, anyway. Wh what I have learned, basically, from my empirical conversations that I, I have because uh, I have to, to live in the world, as they say, just to, to buy uh, food and to buy uh, stuff uh, eventually uh, to produce my videos, like uh, tools, uh, pens, paper, whatever, whatever. But basically, I try to limit uh, the amount of time that I spend talking to people because I try to work as much as I can to share my knowledge, which is kind of a contradiction that I have, namely, I express uh, my my um, most um, my most um, what is the proper qualification? I would say my best. I don't know my most uh, fully developed uh, thoughts. On, on the on this YouTube channel on the internet in English, but I am well aware that um, whatever goes on the internet becomes public. So there is not a private life and a public life. Uh, it's it's one. So uh, this is in a way that I I am I know myself to be a hypocrite, and I have been a hypocrite for uh, many months because. I, I I speak in English and I share my thoughts in English with potentially the whole world, but I do not share these thoughts with the empirical people that I meet uh, in, in everyday life for the simple reason that I try to express myself in very simple language, but 
I don't because I know the reason. <laughs> because if someone asked me to explain what I call my truth, as of now, I would be unable or it would, it would be very difficult and um, how should I explain this? Basically, <laughs> my truth is the kind of truth which leads in, maybe in the best case scenario in a mental asylum when I talk about uh, being the whole of reality, etc., etc., uh, yeah. So it's not that I don't want uh, to go <laughs> to a mental asylum. Maybe this is where I belong. I already visited uh, these kind of places, and I will visit worse places. I know that. But basically, what I've been trying to do is to uh, to work. Uh, as hard as I can to produce a universal speech which would uh, force people and eventually all people uh, to, 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 to acknowledge that I understand reality better than anyone else because this is my reality in the sense that my consciousness is, is one with reality. So, yeah, which gives me the opportunity to talk about my failure to communicate. Uh, I have shared almost uh, everything <laughs> Uh, that I thought relevant on this channel. I have made countless videos where I try to be honest by posting embarrassing moments, embarrassing aspects about myself, where I speak the truth as I understood the truth, uh, notably the, the introductory video of this channel, that's how I understood the truth uh, on the 16th of May. I try to, I have shared, um, I have shared uh, the, the documents which are formal presentation of the works of Hegel. I have shared all, almost all, all my, my, what I call my personal documents, but I keep partly working on them, modifying some of them. Uh, uh, it, it's not. Uh, I, I keep up, up uh, bringing it, bringing them up to date. Some of them, so I still have documents. But actually, I have shared. Uh, I have shared my library, my bookshelves, uh, information about me, about my other channels. Uh, the links can be found in the video uh, to a Polonian journal about the New World Order to the channel. Uh, eternal light. So I have shared pretty much everything. And, and, and for a few weeks now, I think I, I, I share my, my, uh, my empirical address in every video. So uh, I ask myself the question, but Why do I keep failing? Why do I fail to communicate? And I understand more and more because, because of the conversation that I have had with empirical people. And I have come to the realization over the past, uh, the past few weeks and months, that actually the the truth or the the, the 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 knowledge that I have been trying to share is so complex, 
so far removed from ordinary consciousness, so maybe so difficult to understand that I, on an empirical level, in my empirical consciousness, I have believed many times that the reason why people do not watch my videos is because I am not serious enough intellectually and, and I understand human psyche uh, if uh, a random guy starts to make videos on the internet, he has no credibility, he has no status, status he has no uh, uh, reputation, so you have to, to, to establish a reputation. It's, uh, that's what I've been trying to do by, by making uh, videos, uh, making videos uh, where I try to be rigorous intellectually, to comment Hegel, that's what I said, I wouldn't do that any longer. I, I did this in my video about logic the previous one simply because it's not really Hegel in the sense that this was a, this is just a lecture, so I, I, I broke my own rule, but I'm okay with that because uh, for this, uh, this, this aspect, because uh, it was really for, for the sake of trying to communicate. So I tried, I have tried to to lower uh, to lower the communication to to simplify uh, to uh, really to, to, to express myself as simply as possible. But it has failed. And when I have discussions with ordinary people, I realize that my level of consciousness and knowledge, although I experience myself as being kind of dumb, actually I, I know way more uh, than, than they do because I have spent maybe, uh, maybe al almost 10 years of my life uh, doing nothing but read books and, 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 uh, and watch videos. And um, uh, I, I will talk oh, because <laughs> when I have conversations, usually very short conversations, but they are useful nonetheless with ordinary people. If I think this is relevant, I, I, I communicate in my videos. And basically when I, when I speak with people who I know, uh, it's not that they are dumb, but simply that they, they, are, they have not had the opportunity to, to study or whatever. I try to simplify to the utmost. So here's the thought that I would like to share. Uh, we are living an age of revelation Revelation in ancient Greek is the word apocalypse. It means the revelation. The word apocalypse uh, is frightening. The word revelation, well, it's okay. But basically, the, the, the idea in ordinary sense, the Denk Bestimmung, that I would like to share. Because there, there are many uh, things that I have understood and that no one else understands, basically, in the whole world. That, that's why uh, it's kind of weird, because the, the more... Uh, basically, I already said this, but every day I become smarter. Because I read, I reflect back upon my videos or my thoughts or my life or my decision or whatever. So I become smarter every day. So I kind of regret having said or done or not said or not done pretty much everything because the more smart I become, the better perspective I have. So basically, but I will not repeat this, but whatever. 
uh, basically I will express myself clearly uh, it's been 20 minutes I, I will express uh, the, 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 the thought that I wanted to share basically what people do not understand is that when anyone speaks on the internet potentially uh, anyone else can can watch the video in real time i don't know exactly how many internet users there are but i think potentially at least four billions all over the world so potentially whatever i understood this idea four years ago i think or and whatever Do I have the proper the proper t-shirt? Yeah. Do we see? When we are tired, uh, we are attacked by ideas that we conquered uh, a long time ago. That's why maybe Nietzsche is my only friend because whatever. So yeah, what I want to say. A, a, a very simple thought that I understood many years ago sometimes I tend to forget but actually I don't uh, whatever people say on the internet becomes public property the public property of mankind maybe anyone with an internet connection uh, in uh, Zimbabwe uh, 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 Laos uh, South Korea uh, Bolivia uh, wherever can access anything which is made public on the internet so uh, people when they speak on the internet they think most of the time that they speak to their audience to their subscribers or when they make a video respond to a given specific person or to a group of person but what they don't realize is that anyone can watch what they say uh, so that's why sometimes maybe i tend to forget but i i will not uh, suppress anything that i have said i will not suppress any video i did this once uh, one video at the very beginning of this channel in, in february because of whatever but I will not suppress any of my videos because it's not that I do not regret having said some of the things that I said, but simply out of honesty, uh, I have to be willing to defend. I mean, not in a sense that there are things that I regret having said, but basically I will not deny that I have said or thought whatever I said or thought. I will not deny this. Uh, it might be difficult, but yeah, but basically people they think in terms of of groups group identity um uh, people who have uh, makeup content uh, they think that they speak to the makeup community uh the the the, the book uh, book uh, what do you call this people who make book channels uh, let's talk about uh, books uh, to those who are interested in books uh, uh, cooking channels uh, to the people who want uh, to learn how to cook uh, uh, and and the the the, uh, the, the in the, the political sphere the, the leftist they think that they speak to the leftist the liberals uh, which are the party leftists they think they speak to the liberals uh, the conservative, they speak. They think that they speak to the conservative. The nationalist, uh, they think that they speak to the nationalist, but they don't realize that anyone can access their videos. Uh, if I were, <laughs> could be worse, but if I were a, an FBI agent or a CIA agent, I would watch the videos of the 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 fringe groups on the left and on the right, the, the far right extremists and the far left extremists to know what they talk about. Uh, and they probably do this. <laughs> but basically, 
a thought, which is actually very, very simple, but basically, uh, the entire intellectual and spiritual life of a country, and eventually of the whole world, is being made manifest uh, uh, in real time through the people who express themselves, not only on YouTube, but on the internet. It's mostly on YouTube, but it can be uh, Twitter, TikTok, uh, whatever, uh, BeatShoot, uh, uh, whatever uh, platform, uh, uh, Tinder, uh, or uh, te Telegram, or whatever, whatever. Facebook. Uh. And in order to understand, it's, it's both very difficult and very easy, one just, ha one just have to have the broad picture, this is not the broad picture, this is just an illustration. Let me, in order to understand a topic or, or anything, one has to adopt the, the full view, the view of the totality. And uh, how should I explain this? I should have should have taken notes because here I'm speaking randomly. But basically, uh, I will I will talk and I will take very, very concrete examples. Other books about economy, yeah, well, okay, that's a spontaneous order. Let us talk about the Mises Institute. Yeah, I will put the link to a video by the Mises Institute. Anyone with an internet connection, potentially four billion people. I, at least 4 billion. They can watch, if they speak English, they can watch the videos by the Mises Institute. And they can, they can hear about what I call sound economic policies. And, and to see the Mises Institute, their videos, they make a few thousands of views. Uh, Jeff Deist, uh, uh, Di Lorenzo, uh, Per Bailund, uh, Tom, Tom Woods, I mean, he's not in the Mises Institute, but basically the libertarians. Here I I I I am I am partly partly in in a in a stable mood because uh, I've had a, a relatively peaceful day intellectually but whatever but I under I am kind of frustrated because I understood this many years ago and I failed to I basically I I have developed so fast intellectually that I forgot all the, 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 the steps. I will not show the t-shirt. The I mean, I will, actually, I will. <laughs> when, when we are tired, uh, no, what is it? Uh, when we are tired, we are attacked by ideas that, that we conquered long ago, basically. There are so many ideas in the ordinary sense that I understood such a long time ago that I didn't think were, were that bright or that brilliant, so I did not take but I should have basically whatever, but I will simplify here. I understood many years ago that Ludwig von Mises, where is Mises? Where is Mises? Yeah. Because I wanted to imitate Hegel, basically. I wanted to be super rigorous and to to be just like Hegel, I should have. This book, Socialism, it was written, I think, officially uh, in uh, oh, 1951. I thought that it was uh, uh, in the 1920s. Uh, okay, I said something stupid then. Okay, okay, maybe... Uh, No, no, it's actually, I'm, I'm correct. Uh, maybe I will uh, edit this part because, but because basically what I thought is that this book was written in the 1920s. And here it's first published in 1951. But there's a preface to the second German edition, which dates from 1932. I will check. Uh, I will check.
whatever, whatever. Uh, yes, that's what I thought. <laughs> 1922, officially. Uh, not officially, yeah. Of this book about socialism dates from 1922. And I understood many years ago that basically Mises, he had understood pretty much everything about the economic aspect of socialism. So if the people of Soviet Russia, uh, Maoist China, Cuba, uh, eventually West, uh, Eastern Germany, uh, and when it means it was part of the USSR, but uh, uh, the people in uh, Cambodia and uh, all, the, all the, 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 the states, the Latin American states, even the Western European who implemented moderate version of socialism, whatever, if people had read this book when it was published, they would have been able to, to prevent the disastrous economic policies which have been implanted, implemented throughout the 20th century and still are being implemented in many countries because Mises had understood I mean I'm not saying that it's perfect no, but it's a very good uh, he understood conceptually uh, most of the problems with socialism from an economic standpoint and uh, basically what I'm trying to express I'm a little bit tired, but I will, I will uh, conclude the video. I mean, I mean, I still have a lot of things to say, but basically... Anyone with an internet connection, they can... Uh, they can have access to the totality of world information in real time. They can... Uh, look at the history of mankind being written. They can have access... To, to all the economic knowledge, psychological knowledge, uh, the knowledge of physics, chemistry, biology, uh, anthropology. It's a little bit more difficult to find uh, these, but basically the, the, about history, so the, the, the totality of world knowledge is being made available. That's why we are living in an age of revelation. But any any people any person interested in in politics if they have a, the, 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 the opportunity they can they can look on the internet about the history of economics not by uh, typing a uh, history of economics on wikipedia but if, if they can search if they are smart if they know where to seek they can for instance they can find the mises institute <laughs> the books by mises if they have the opportunity they can um, order uh, this book or any other book uh, uh, here I, I, I don't have on I do not only have right-wing books uh, here's a book by Greber about debt which would be left-wing economics in a way or another book a more modern version by Di Lorenzo and in order to be fair in terms of uh, Quantity, I can pick up. Uh, let us bring Keynes. Yeah, Keynes. Okay. If it's Mises versus Keynes, I think uh, Mises wins. But, uh, yeah. I have Marx as well, basically. Uh, anyone with, with the leisure, the opportunity, the intelligence, or the time, they can look on the internet and they can notice that basically. Uh, there has been a lot of fallacies uh, told by economists over the, the, f the past few centuries and how should I explain it? Actually it's so simple that uh, how should I explain this? Basically, uh, let us imagine let us imagine an, an African uh, po politician. Politician here doesn't mean someone who wants to be elected as a representative, uh, democratically elected um, 
official, but someone who is interested in politics. I mean, a, a, a political activist. He can read this book if he has uh, enough uh, leisure and time. If, if he's uh, an activist, uh, he has to eventually. He, he gets an internet connection. He can read in a very... Uh, very uh, summarized, a very it's a, it's a good book. I mean, one can disagree, but it's a good book intellectually. It's a, it's, it's good. It's not brilliant. It's it's good. Uh, Mises, it's uh, on a higher level. But here, the purpose of this book is not to be a scholarly uh, discussion. It's to be accessible, simplified. So it it fits the purpose, and it's it's a good, very good book for what it is. It's very good. And here, the, in a very simplified way. All the, the economic problems with socialism, the problem with socialism, why socialism is always and everywhere an economic disaster, egalitarianism versus human reality, uh, why the worst rise to the top under socialism, etc., etc., how the welfare, how welfare harms the poor, etc., uh, etc., et uh, the detrimental effect of regulations, monopolies, minimum wages. So anyone with the leisure, the intelligence, the time, the opportunity, the resources can pick up this book. And I could say the same thing. Uh, let, us, uh, let, let us bring it up. That's not really economics, but anyone who can, can, can read this book. Uh, it, it's not really, strictly speaking, economics as such, but it's, it's partly a left-wing, although it's beyond left and right. Uh, it's simply, a, like I said, common sense, but whatever. In a sense that people can know that basically there are problems with socialism, but there are problems with capitalism as well. There, there, there are problems with the educational system, not only in America, but in most countries. They can know, basically, they just, they don't even have to, 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 uh, to buy the book, but simply they, 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 they check on, on, uh, on Amazon that there are books. Here it's a very moderate book uh, about human diversity, the, the up-to-date, politically correct, uh, modern development of knowledge concerning uh, Sociobiology, basically, I simplify. It's I said it's right wing, but actually it's just common sense. Here, Edward Dutton, it's right wing as well, but actually it's just scientific realism. Like yeah, and this book, uh, for instance, is a respond to these kind of books. It's not a direct response to this book or this one, but it's kind of a reciprocal mutually determining process. That's why it's yin and yang in a way, basically. So anyone can can access uh, the information and, and realize that most jobs, not most, but a lot of jobs in modern developed societies, they are just bullshit jobs that the bureaucracy technology, stupidity, and the secret joys of bureaucracy, that there are endless rules and regulations. So basically, Greber, who was an, an anarcho-communist in war, and an, a leftist anarchist, he agrees with Mises, who was a far right, from, from an economic standpoint. Whatever, whatever. That's what I've been trying to communicate. So here, there is the, 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 le the modern left-wing criticism of bureaucracy, and here the, 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 the old-fashioned, it, it's from the, the 1940s, I think, criticism of bureaucracy. But these two books, they say basically the same, uh, the same thing, I might say, more or less, basically. So anyone with an internet connection and leisure and, and a, a minimum of intelligence can, can do this. So in real time, you have, it, it never happened, here I will uh, talk, uh, yeah. it never happened before in the history of mankind. Basically, there is Ron Paul. I don't know how the Americans view Ron Paul. Uh, I made 
videos where I said that basically for me Ron Paul would be a, a moderate uh, common sense uh, libertarian from my perspective from, from the American perspective I mean uh, <laughs> in France <laughs> Ron Paul would be considered a far-right extremist because he advocates a uh, free market uh, etc et he, he would be considered a dangerous far-right extremist but within the American context from a strictly economic standpoint the view that I have from, from a, an empirically uh, French perspective is that Ron Paul would be a moderate, respectable, and that, that's how I envision him, he's kind of a respectable libertarian figure. He is kind of a right-leaning, uh, respectable figure, like Charles Murray. Charles Murray is a little bit less respectable because he talks about sociobiology, but both, in my view, they are kind of respectable. I don't know how the Americans view them, but it's not really important as of now, but basically, yeah. And uh, what was I saying? Yeah, let us talk a little bit about history. That's what I, my empirical uh, conversation of this morning. Mid 15th century in Europe, the invention of the printing press by Gutenberg. A few decades later comes the Protestant Reformation. There are several reasons. There, the, the printing press, the fall of Constantinople, and the, 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 the rediscovery of the, the writings of the ancient, and also the discovery of the Americas, so being confronted by a new people, a new, a new, I mean, a new uh, way of envisioning a relationship to culture, to the other, etc. So, these three events, the printing press, the fall of Constantinople, and the discovery of, of, of a new continent with, with uh, completely different cultures, brought about, uh, at the beginning of the 16th century, uh, a change of mentality in Europe, which eventually gave birth to uh, the, the Protestant Reformation by Martin Luther, mostly. Uh, yeah. So the spread of information, the printing press brought about religious reformation. I simplify to the utmost. In the 18th century, the development of, of knowledge, again, through, um, of course, the development of the printing press, but it had already, already been the case, but mostly through the development of the, 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 the rise of educated classes among the bourgeoisie, which spread ideas, here it's the French perspective, in the, the coffee shops. Uh, this is the development of public opinion, namely the, 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 the bourgeoisie rose to prominence uh, economically and culturally, not yet politically, but economically and culturally, and they exchanged ideas and thoughts in uh, les salons parisiens, namely the, 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 the Parisian, uh, how do you call this? living rooms, no, that's not li li living room would be literally, but basically in, in the coffee shops, in, in the public, the pubs, these were not pubs that would be specific to England, but basically what in England they call pubs or, a, uh, yeah, a coffee shop in a way, where the, the bourgeoisie could, could meet and exchange ideas and thoughts and, and the new public opinion would be made uh, manifest through this discussion, it would spread through printing, uh, official or unofficial, and this spread of ID, which was made possible by a, a rise of uh, the economic um, prosperity of the bourgeoisie, the rise of uh, literacy also, par partly among the, 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 the sons and, and daughters of the aristocracy, uh, of, the, of the bourgeoisie, uh, uh, the various reasons, but basically the, the spread of information and knowledge <coughs> through, for example, the Encyclopedia <coughs> in France by uh, Diderot and D'Alembert, etc., made it so that uh, it brought about the, the French Revolution, basically. So it had an, an, an effect upon politics, like the printing press gave rise to the Reformation, uh, the coffee shops and the, the development of public opinion in the 18th century gave rise a, a couple or a few decades later to the French Revolution. And now we are witnessing a third 
uh, one could say to a certain extent that uh, the radio uh, enabled uh, the, the, the rise of uh, Mussolini and, and even um, uh, national socialism. It was through radio and, and, and cinema in a way that uh, so yeah, development of means of communication brings about changes and the reverse is true. It's uh, American propaganda for, for good or for bad which enabled uh, most of the massive changes. But here cinema and radio would be the elites using the means of communication to manipulate the people. Um, now, the, 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 the printing press and, and the, the coffee shops and the public opinion in the 18th century and, and now with the internet, it's the opposite, namely that the people can have access to information and it will bring about a revolution, a massive change, a massive transformation. It's simply logical. It has to happen basically because, because information is, is being made available in real time all over the world. And the revolution, uh, the, the reformation, which was in a way a religious revolution, it was a reformation, occurred mostly in, in Western, uh, Western Europe, uh, mostly. Uh, it had an impact upon Eastern Europe, but it, mo it was mostly Germany, uh, and then it gave, there was the, the, the Thirty Years' War in, in the 17th century. So it, it had uh, profound uh, political effects, but it affected mostly Western Europe. Uh, the, the spread of ideas in the French Revolution, it affected mostly Western Europe, but then again, uh, the Napoleonic Wars, he spread his ideas uh, until uh, uh, up to, um, not until, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, to to try to implement his ideas to Russia, uh, it affected uh, the, maybe the, basically the, the, the whole of Europe in a way. But it was still just Europe. And, and now the, the, with the internet, it's the whole world, the whole technologically endowed world. And uh, it affects mostly, as of now, the Anglo-Saxon world or the, the English speaking world because most of the knowledge produced is, is written in English because uh, the Anglo-Saxons are very smart, they have a spirit of independence that they owe to Protestantism. <laughs> Don't forget. <laughs> that's a joke. I mean, that's serious, but uh, yeah, it's mostly the Anglo-Saxons and mostly in America because of the spirit of, of Anglo-Saxon independence and also the American Constitution. Uh, yeah, an American Anglo-Saxon culture of, of, of investigation, uh, self-inquiry, and, and the, 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 the idea of Protestantism is that authority comes directly from God uh, and that uh, no institution should uh, should interfere. That's why there is freedom of, of investigation, both legally through the constitution, but also in the mind and the spirit of, of most Anglo-Saxon, namely they, they, they think they, 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 Anglo-Saxons, they experience this as some sort of a moral duty to investigate, to question. It can be uh, sometimes can be annoying. Why do you ask so many questions? <laughs> No, seriously, it, it's kind of a, here it's a virtue. Uh, there, there can be problem, but here it's a virtue, namely the, the spirit of independence. And, and it's not only the Anglo-Saxons, the French have this as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, but it's, it's predominantly a, a Protestant, I want to say a Nordic and Protestant spirit. So, what was I saying? Yeah, that 
information is being made available in real time and uh, here I will talk about uh, about physics and chemistry and biology the sciences what I've been reading for uh, today to kind of, sta kind of stabilize my mind whole. Here it's written in French, but basically it's a, what they call a compendium. The whole of physics uh, uh, made available in a book about chemistry. It's here it's a kind of a basic uh, Uh, introduction to a basic college level. Uh, here it's kind of a college level. Uh, these are examples, but the, these books, uh, the, these kind of handbooks or compendium, or I don't know how you call this, namely books which encompass, 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 oh, I don't know how to describe it, encompass. Uh, the, 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 the most recent knowledge in a kind of scholarly, although accessible, it's vulgarization in a good sense, then it's a complex, up-to-date knowledge made available for the layman, as they call this in English, namely someone with uh, the leisure, the time, the intelligence, without being an expert, but someone who is uh, reasonably uh, smart or reasonably intelligent, he can have access to... Uh, the whole of knowledge in uh, biology, physics, chemistry, etc., etc. But uh, what uh, maybe I, I, I think I may be one of the very few. There are ideas that I know I'm the only one to know them, but this kind of idea, namely that there is only one physical universe. The, the, the physicists, they know this, but sometimes they fail to express, namely that the laws of physics, they are the same for every human. Uh, w there is only one cosmos. We all live in the same cosmos. The sun is the same for all. Uh, the solar system is the same for all. Uh, the, the, the laws of chemistry, they are the same for all. Uh, the, 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 the laws of biology. Uh, here I will seek a book about the, by Dawkins. Uh, again, but the, the laws of biology, uh, they are the same for all. So basically, there is... Uh, let us talk about mathematics. <coughs> Uh, <clears throat> Let us talk about mathematics. Uh, the the, the not strictly speaking laws in mathematics. These are more uh, uh, theorems and uh, properties and features of objects, or whatever. I don't know how they call this, but uh, <clears throat> here is Mr. Dawkins. Yeah. So biology, physics, chemistry, mathematics. Uh, the, the, the knowledge about this stuff is made available in real time for anyone with the leisure or the opportunity to study these topics. And the other fields, psychology, anthropology, economics, sociology, political theory, uh, the history of nations, everything is being made available in real time. And the reason why I understand this is because I am the negative, but also because, so in a way, I, I was determined probably to, 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 to understand this, but let us uh, leave that aside for now. Uh, 
basically what I understand and that no one else understands or seems to understand is that in order to, to understand a, a topic, one has to adopt the full spectrum. Here it's not very rigorous because here we have anti-racism on the left and race realism on the right and we have anti-bureaucracy uh, anti, anti anti-bureaucracy uh, on the left, anti-bureaucracy kind of on the right, critic of the educational system on the left and on the right, but it's not very rigorous. I could have picked up other topics, but basically I will, I will speak the truth because here I'm kind of tired. I don't want the video to be too long because uh, yeah, but anyone in America, but it's it's here. It's the um, I, I, that's why it will have been made clear. The reason why I made this video about the logic of uh, logic for uh, teenagers, basically UPS. There is a problem with the American educational system, but it's valid for every Western educational system and probably all the countries in the world who are inspired one way or another by the, by the Western educational system. So th there's a problem with the educational system pretty much everywhere, I guess. Uh, but here, let us talk about Americans. Any American, he doesn't even have to read the book. Like I, I probably haven't, I, 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 I skipped through the books uh, four years ago. Uh, I, I could not make a summary because I don't have I do not have the time to read to, to, to read all the books that I buy, but I get the idea as I say sometimes. But basically any American with an internet connection, you can either order the book on Amazon or you can listen to Ron Paul or the Mises Institute or go on their website and see that they talk about education or even even more simple, you can go on the on Amazon and look at what the comments say about this book or even better <laughs> you can enter the american educational system and if you have you probably have noticed that there is a problem <laughs> there is a problem with with this education but it's valid in every western country and probably in most countries so that's the first time in, a, in the entire history of mankind, let us assume that uh, the historical process or whatever, that's the first time that anyone basically in developed countries at least with an internet connection, they can have access to knowledge in real time. And this process is kind of Hegelian because the philosophy of Hegel is not just ontology, namely how things are. So here, if we if have to talk about ontology, uh, human beings are biologically diverse. That's ontology. The ontology of biology, namely how biological determinations are. So that's one thing. Uh, that's good to know ontology, but there is not just being, there is the consciousness of being. So to say that uh, humans are diverse, this is one thing. But to become aware that humans are diverse is another thing. That's why the philosophy of Hegel is actually kind of very simple formally, but it's also very complex because uh, Because, uh, because consciousness changes the structure of reality, uh, basically. Uh, the fact that there is a bureaucracy, uh, that's one thing. But to, to the fact to, that to know that there is a bureaucracy and to know that it is inefficient and parasitical and a waste of time for the bureaucrats and for the people who have to deal with the bureaucracy. That's the reality changes the moment when 
people realize uh, realize this, namely that that uh, yeah, <sighs> basically. So. Uh, The, this is why we are living an age of revelation. In Greek is apocalypse. And um, yeah. And uh, this is why uh, people, most people, they, they, they don't like the idea of uh, the new world order. Uh, but there is only one cosmos, one physical universe. There's only one solar system, one planet. Uh, there are many races, but there is only one human species. Uh, there are many economic policies, but eventually there, there is only one economic policy uh, which might uh, be uh, uh, adequate or proper because there are many flawed economic policies. But the process of uncover, uncovering all the flawed moments, oh, that's very Hegelian. But basically, uh, and when I when I have finished this video, I will uh, sleep a little bit because uh, I've realized that I need uh, to sleep in order to be mentally balanced. And then I will keep working on the, the video that I had been working uh, at least intellectually for a few days. Uh, although I took uh, distraction, they need to talk about uh, sociobiology. But what I want to say is that. When knowledge is made available, reality changes. Here, this is a very moderate book. It talks about men and women. I will. I have not read the books fully, but I will. I will. Uh, uh, I will. Uh, I will speak uh, what I remember reading a few months ago. It says basically that uh, an, an example, which is interesting. Women and men, boys and girls, who are uh, basically mathematical geniuses. I, as far as I remember, there was a sample of, of young, super gifted uh, teenage girls in mathematics and teenage boys. So these people, they had these, uh, these teenagers, they had been told their entire life that they were geniuses, brilliant, etc. So they were encouraged by their environment, their parents, society, teachers, probably to pursue a career in the study of mathematics. I'm not sure that it's the, the example because I read this a few months ago, but I think it is. So maybe my memory uh, deludes me, but I think th this is what I understood. But even if it's not true, it's not, it's not important because the, the, the purpose is to illustrate. So it was just an illustration to see that this group of very gifted, young uh, mathematician uh, people, when they grew older, their career path diverged and the women, they chose uh, careers which were more focused toward relationship with people, towards social relationships. And the purpose of this experiment was to show that the reason why men and women do not pursue the same career path is not because of the environment, because here this, this counterexample proves this theory, the theory of an environmentalism wrong, maybe that Women, they, they, they would like to, to have more, they, they would like to have jobs which are more connected to people, whereas men, it's more connected to things. In, 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 other, word, uh, in other words, uh, women, they are more in a kind of a social intelligence and emotional intelligence, and men, they are more in a visual, spatial, and abstract intelligence. And, and they find careers fulfilling to the extent that they can 
use their 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 their, their, their uh, natural uh, I'm I'm uh, <laughs> reading the book that's why I cannot express myself clearly yeah what I want to say basically yeah on average women have better social cognition than men I'm just trying to, to find, uh, on average, males have substantially better visual spatial skills than females. So basically, I just have to find this uh, example. So whatever. The, what the example was supposed to illustrate is that even when women or females or young girls are put in, a, in an environment where they are encouraged to pursue a career in mathematics, for instance, or physics, or whatever, even if they have the skill, the, the encouragement, the environment, they will still, on average, choose uh, uh, to do what they like, basically, to, to have social contact with people. So, that's just to illustrate that, the, 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 of course, there's an aspect of environ environmentalism that... Uh, if uh, women are completely denied education, they cannot become physicist or chemist or mathematician. But even when they have the intelligence, the, the super gift, uh, the, the, the support of the parents, the, the, the teacher, that they, they, do, they do not necessarily want to. There, there is a fundamental difference between males and females in terms of career path. That, and, and this knowledge, it's just common sense. It has been common sense for, for centuries and even millennia, but the Western world mostly has sunk into insanity. There are reasons, I will not discuss the reasons, but basically uh, common sense is being re-established, <laughs> re, re but now it's scientifically backed up and uh, there can be endless debates about the values of science. Is it uh, ideology, whatever? But at some moment when people read this, they would say, yeah, actually, that's true. Uh, I'm a male. I enjoy uh, working with uh, tools or with uh, visual spatial intelligence. That's not how they formulate this, but basically that's what uh, males think. To, to, to exert visual spatial or uh, abstract logical intelligence. I mean, there are males who enjoy uh, social roles, etc. But basically, yeah, and, and females and the ideology feminist ideology it's very uh, powerful is that but there comes a moment when reality contradicts the ideology and uh, the consciousness of reality is being made manifest on the internet and here i will just talk about the example of women there are many women who say yeah but actually uh, uh, we would rather be uh, stay-at-home uh, moms or we would rather work in, in social uh, environment and we, we simply don't want to become a physicist, a astrophysicist, uh, we don't want to become uh, philosophers, we don't want to become uh, uh, engineers. I mean, there are women who would like to and there are female philosophers like uh, Ellie Anderson. <laughs> She's very smart and uh, <laughs> very attractive. <laughs> that's the truth I'm in a mood uh, to uh, yeah but anyway but yeah it, uh, there, there are female philosophers and they might be more or less competent uh, there are uh, female engineers and they can probably design a great uh, instruments of all sorts but on, on the, the trend the trend it's becoming manifest so it's not in a sense, partly that's my opinion, but kind of my opinion is kind of worthless. It's simply the the world consciousness becoming conscious of itself that it's common sense that males and females are different. It's common sense that there is diversity anthropologically, uh, and this common sense is breaking through the insanity, uh, the insane ideology. I am not judging. I mean, I am. Uh, but in the sense that there is there is a reason why the insanity emerged and, and there is also a reason why the counter insanity which is a restoration of common sense is emerging as well and this is uh, a Hegelian process but whatever what I want to say 
is that <sighs> basically we I say we but actually uh, there is only one being but I will speak as a we we will go through uh, we will we are living a, a, a time of revelation uh, an, an age of apocalypse and there is a reason why <sighs> because my life has been an apocalypse in a way uh, but yeah and um, yeah so that was just an illustration it's been one hour and ten minutes so now I will I will I will um, I will uh, show this, basically. These are the categories, some categories. Sein und nichts is being and nothing. An sich means in itself, Realität means reality, and the other words, they are in English. So, I just drew this very simply about uh, the question of of anthropology uh, or of uh, uh, there is a Jewish symbol, a symbol of peace, a Chinese symbol, a Christian symbol, etc. This is a very simple presentation, and I, I will uh, develop on that. Uh, probably tomorrow. This is just an illustration uh, that uh, here it's the, the categories which are used, but these are actually the categories of being and here are categories of essence and the particular universal, these are the categories of the concept. So these are only some of the categories. But on the question of uh, human diversity, let us say. And the question of race, which are actually tied. Uh, there is a left-wing perspective and a right-wing perspective. And usually on the left, on the question of anthropology and race and sociobiology, they use these categories. And on the right, they use these categories. I simplify briefly. Uh, the left, they say, uh, th there is no such thing as race, which means uh, uh, there is only one race, which is Anzish in itself, uh, which is the moment of the abstraction of being. Whereas on the right, they say, no, race is real, which means the moment of negation. And there are many uh, races. So in case uh, it's not clear, these categories, they are, they are all the same, but in a more developed fashion, namely uh, being uh, Qualitative being is Anzish, uh, it becomes one, this is attraction, continuity, identity. So identity is continuity, attraction, and unity in the moment of the essence. Equality and identity and positive, they are kind of various logical moments of the same unfolding. And eventually in the sphere of the concept, this becomes universal. So th th this is all the same category. <laughs> this is the category of being. Uh, in, in, in various um, logical moments. And here is the category of nothing or negation in the various moments. So, uh, Anzish, which means in itself, is opposed to reality, which is Sein für Anders and, and therefore negation. Uh, what is one becomes many. Attraction versus repulsion. What is continuous is discrete. What is identical is different. Equality, inequality, positive, negative, universal, particular, uh, and the soul, and here would be uh, the, the flesh, in a way. Uh, so, uh, basically, on the question of race, I simplify in uh, two minutes. The left says there, there's only one race, the human race. The right, they say, no, there are many races. Uh, 
that's why the, the leftist ideology is attractive because unity is attractive and multiplicity can be uh, repulsive in a sense that uh, in a question of anthropology it brings conflict, tension, etc. The left, still on the question of, of um, sociobiology, race, anthropology, etc. They say th th there is one race, it is continuous, we are all the same family, there is a continuity between all human groups, etc. The right, they use, they use the opposed determination, the other moment, which is discretion. No, there are distinctions, that's why there are many uh, races, etc. Uh, we are all identical. No, we are different. Uh, all humans are equal. No, they are unequal. Uh, the unity, uh, the continuity, the identity, the equality of all humans is positive. And here they uh, say no, it's negative, and that's why they are considered to be the evil bad guys because they are they are the moment of negativity, and that's why the left, in spite of sometimes the stupidity, the deception, or even the manipulation, they are always considered to be the good guys because they stand on the side of uh, the soul, the universal, the positive equality identity, which are moments of being, and people usually they love being. And the right, they stand for the moments of, of, of the negative, and that's why they, they, uh, they are not very well liked, basically. Uh, but the two moments, one side and the other, it's like the yin and yang, you know, in a way. And the difficulty, that the spirit of God in its pure, uh, immaterial uh, manifestation, I say, is in the center in a way. But the process of spirit consists precisely not in remaining still in the center, but in switching from left to right. And uh, that's what brings about the intellectual life and spiritual life of a country, of a people, of the world, because life means movement, uh, which is driven by, by negation in a way. Uh, and it's very difficult to be in the center because uh, because uh, the, the, the flesh, one might say, the, the blood, the, 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 the human aspect uh, is, a, is, is a, Is a human all to human, one might say. But basically, uh, here I will quote a passage from Edward Dutton. I should have begun the video, maybe. It's about a book about, um, it's about Philip Rushton, but it's written by Mr. Dutton. It's an Anglo Saxon, <laughs> a typical Anglo Saxon, <laughs> who talks about the categories. Uh, that's amazing. An Anglo-Saxon scientist who talks about the categories. And here is what he has to say about the categories. Uh, before commencing our examination of race, it is worth emphasizing a point about scientific categories. All categories inherently simplify, neglect that which is borderline, and thus leave out items which do not quite fit into a given system of categories. Such reductionism is central to the scientific method. We all employ reductionism in our daily lives in order to comprehend the mass of information by which we are confronted. The only way we can comprehend this is to break up reality into smaller, more manageable chunks, that is to say, categories. Although there are conceptual problems in doing so, this process is useful as long as the categories allow successful predictions to be made. Uh... Yeah. So I repeat uh, basically the, what an Anglo-Saxon, uh, how he expresses himself. Uh, to break up reality into smaller, more manageable chunks, that is to say categories. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's one way of expressing what a category is, basically. Uh, I mean, it's... it's and he says uh, later that he is right, uh, that uh, the, the, 
that it, it is expressed through language. Uh, language is the, the, the tool through which man expresses the categories which are the pure thought determinations which are found in the mind of God, in a way. Uh, and here are just an, an example of a few categories, but the, the first step is to, to use the, the categories and then to understand that one cannot be thought of without the other. That's speculative logic. That whatever is continuous is also discrete. Identity implies difference. Equality implies inequality. The positive cannot be without the negative and the universal has to particularize itself. Uh, the one becomes the many, etc., etc. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, that's why I I keep making videos on logic because it is very important to to understand the categories, basically. And I have failed to communicate, but I still have resources, uh, intellectual at least. I still have uh, plans in the good sense to try to communicate, but basically I will no longer make uh, lectures on logic. I made a lecture on speculative logic and others previously, but I will, as long as I, as I make videos and as long as I speak, I will try to, to, to use categories to illustrate and uh, to, 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 to talk about given topics and to illustrate by, by categories, namely to, to begin with what is empirical and to elevate the mind of those who will watch my videos to the realm of the noumenal, as Kant would say, namely the, the pure intellect, in a way. Because, uh, here I will just illustrate, but when one understands that the difference between the left and the right uh, on the question of race can briefly be put, the difference between continuity and discretion. On the left they say that all, all races are continuous, that's not the word that they use, but that's what they think. We are all continuous, and on the right they say, no, we are all discrete. But the purpose of studying logic is to realize that continuity and discretion cannot be thought of without one another. They reciprocally presuppose one another. And uh, the, the very stupid example is to say that light, which is electromagnetic waves, light from a physical standpoint is continuous, but it can also, it can also be separated in a discrete fashion. So to say that there are no races because there is a continuum between all humans, which is true. There is a continuum between all humans. But to say, to conclude that there are no races would be like saying that there, is, there are no colors because there is a continuum between uh, purple, uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, etc. Which is true. There is a continuum within the, the, the specter of uh, the spectrum, I don't know how you call it, the spectrum of visible light, but it's not because light is continuous on an electromagnetic scale that it, it, it is not real. Uh, the difference between uh, yellow and orange is continuous, but it can be discreetly uh, identified or, uh, or, or, neg or separated in a way. Uh, and it's even clearer with the difference between uh, yellow and blue, etc., etc. So, yeah, that's the importance of the categories. Now I will just uh, drink uh, a glass of water.
I know uh, I made videos on my other channel to try to illustrate how I envision in a very simplified very simplified view the 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 division some of the divisions uh, not just in the US but in the Western world but here I chose Democrats and Republican uh, to illustrate but in England this would be a uh, Tory and Whigs or uh, conservative and uh, leftist in most countries or uh, Republican and Democrat these are names which are relevant within the American context but the division between left and right in the sphere of politics it can be applied to every democratic society and eventually every society uh, because there are left-wing and right-wing tendencies in, in any society uh, ev even in a uh, in Stalinist Russia, there were left-wing Stalinists and right-wing Stalinists, whatever. So here are some of the debates uh, in anthropology. So it's classified according to the structure of the encyclopedia. Uh, conservative versus liberals. Uh, conservative are mostly white. Liberals, uh, they are all white. I mean, uh, liberals means a white liberal, but they are defending or... Uh, they, 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 they are on the side with mostly non-white, but they are non-white conservatives, but basically the, that's why it's very, very simplified. There are oppositions in, in all countries, but mostly in Western countries, between males and females. There are uh, a lot of women who are on the side of, of males, and there are a lot of males who are on the side of females, but basically it's just to, to illustrate the divisions, the separation, the, the opposition, it's really simplified according to the logical structure of the encyclopedia uh, between males and females. Here are, uh, here it's because it's in the encyclopedia, but there are divisions between the old and the young. But that's why the symbol of the yin and yang is important. Uh, in, the, in the Western countries, the old people, the conservative, they are on the right. But there is, there are rebellious white, a uh, rebellious white youth, uh, a right-wing white rebellion on the right, and on the left, usually uh, young people are said to be on the left. This is the classical distinction. You, when you are young, you are left, a leftist, and the, the older you grow, when you, you when you acquire status and resources and money, you become a right winger. <laughs> That's a, a motto or an adage in, in French. Uh, when you are young, your, your heart is on the left, but your wallet is on the right. Or if you are not a leftist uh, at uh, 18 years old, uh, you, are, you are heartless. If you are not a right winger at uh, 30 years old or 40 years old, you are brainless, basically. <laughs> uh, yeah, so usually it's really simplified, but if you had to caricature, usually if it's really a right versus left on a political sphere, Old people, they are right-wingers, young people, they are leftists. But in the context of the modern West, there are rebellious uh, young people who are predominantly, if not only white, on the right wing, I mean. And there are a lot of old people on the left who are, most of them, white, and they are boomers. Uh, racism would be on the right and anti-racism on the left, but there are white... Um, uh, white liberal racists on the left or not only white, they are racist on the left and they are anti-racist on the right so it's that's why there's the yin and yang uh, here we have virtue signaling identity politics versus recognition the identification with the country the family the civilization etc in psychology uh, on the right they advocate linguistic purism and trash talking as well. On the left, it's more linguistic tolerance, but also new speak. Uh, the theory of, of intelligence, so it's in the sphere of psychology, uh, would be IQ is a quantitative determination of intelligence, or the G factor would be on the right, and on the left, they, they talk about multiple intelligence. So in my previous drawing, unity was on the left, and multiplicity, or the many, the category of one and many, the one, 
was kind of the left on the, on the left and the many on the right. But in the on the question of intelligence, it's the opposite. Namely, IQ is a unitarian construct to measure intelligence, whereas multiple intelligence is simply the category of multiplicity applied to intelligence. Uh, about uh, education, so yeah, the inclusive education on the left and harsh criticism on the educational system and higher demands and requirements, uh, higher standards, etc. Then in the realm of law, das Recht, which is uh, the transition from here we have subjective or geist, here it's more objective or geist, das Recht. Uh, there is co the will to control, collectivism, and a relative tolerance to crime on the left. On the right, it's more free speech, which includes gun ownership, individualism, and a will to order. Uh, but there are also people who want to control on the right, and there are collectivists on the right. Uh, yeah, and there are individualists on the left. So it's that's why the symbol of the yin and yang is very useful. In terms of morality, uh, there is cultural Marxism on the left in the context of the modern uh, on the modern way on the modern left, and traditionalism on the right, and the unity of both uh, is cultural Hegelianism, because cultural Hegelianism is kind of a revolt against cultural Marxism, but it would not exist without cultural Marxism, so it's kind of the unity of both. Uh, the woke ideology is on the left, the red pill is on the right. In terms of sexuality, uh, it's more promiscuity on the left and restraint on the right, advocating marriage and family, contraception and porn on the left. I mean, there are a lot of people who watch porn on the right, but the, the tolerance to uh, promiscuity and, and kind of degeneracy is more on the left, but there are degenerates on the right and there are virtuous people on the left. But if we had to, 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 to divide, that would be how, how it is. But one is determined by the other in a way. So that's the view of subjective geist and objective geist. And now I will show just the, the other uh, aspect. <coughs> then again, it's very simplified. Here it's Zietlichkeit, so still in the realm of objective or geist. So we would have socialism on the left and free market on the right. But then again, there are socialists, national usually on the right and free market advocates on the left, but usually socialists are on the left and free market people are on the right, but they, 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 they determine one another reciprocally. Marxists on the left, libertarians on the right. Uh, the middle class is on the right and on the left, in the context of the modern Western world, usually it's the elites and the underclass. I simplify because the working class would be on the right, uh, but by middle class, I mean uh, it's not middle class in the sociological standpoint, it's really people in the middle, people who do not belong neither to the elite nor to the underclass. But here it's really simplified, but basically uh, Hillary Clinton, I mean, most, most politicians in the West, they rule because they are in league with the elites, they are the, the voice of the elite, and they, they are in league with the underclass, uh, namely uh, what Marx would call the lumpen proletariat and the desocialized elements of society. And the, the two sides of the sandwich, they kind of oppress the people in the middle, which incorporates uh, middle class, lower middle class, and working class. Working class, which would not fall into the underclass, and the elites would be uh, the, the, the bourgeoisie and the high middle class. So basically, that's the divide in a way. And Trump would be the advocate of the people in the middle, and Clinton, that's the top and the bottom. I simplify to the utmost. That's what I was starting to say in the video. When, I, when it's too complicated, uh, I cannot communicate. Uh, on the left, it's they advocate the welfare warfare state. On the right, they are critical of banking. Uh, but they are uh, the neocons. They are said to be right wingers, but actually they are leftists. Uh, yeah, ecology would be more on the left. Technology uh, would be on the right, even if technology has a dis detrimental effect upon 
the ecosystem. Uh, media, they are on the left, usually the social media, they are on the right. The CIA, I'm not sure that they are leftist, but uh, if you had to, to divide, yeah. Uh, and the conspiracy theories, they are on the right. But spirit is the process of conspiring against itself and uh, separating itself from itself and coming back into itself. That's spirit. Okay, the JQ would be on the left. And um, the far right, obviously, would be on the right. Uh, geopolitics, uh, well, there are two aspects, the West and the East. Uh, here it's kind of, of problematic because uh, people who are attracted by Russia or China or alternative to the modernity, they are on the right, although they claim to be the defenders of Western civilization. Those who are uh, kind of in a Western perspective, they are on the left, although all they promote is the, the, the brings about kind of the, the, the downfall of the West. So it's here, it's really complicated, but uh, yeah, the deep state is on the left and Dr. Deep State is on the right with Apollonian germ. That's the reason why I've made so many videos, because Apollonian germ uh, is the, maybe that's what I thought and still do. I, I still do think this. I do not doubt that he's the most intelligent other uh, human in, in the world. And I've tried to communicate with him because... Uh, yeah. So globalism versus nationalism. That's what I talked about in not the previous video about logic, but the one just before, namely that globalism and nationalism are two moments of the same logical process, uh, which consists in bringing about a new world order. Because one cannot be thought about without the other. The deep state brings about uh, the analysis of the deep state, which happens to be Dr. Deep State, but one cannot be thought about without the other. Uh, they are in a conceptual unity. <sighs> yeah. And then pop culture. Here are the both. So I put this on the left, but it can be on the right as well. It's on the left because it's more popular. But uh, you would, would have classical art and pop culture, but actually it's interchangeable. So uh, Lady Gaga and Eminem, they are uh, maybe the two greatest artists. I mean, the, the two greatest uh, fully, I would say, fully Hegelian uh, in pop culture. Uh, Lana Del Rey and Marilyn Manson, uh, these are the favorite uh, singers of uh, Stella. And uh, Tokyo Hotel and Rammstein, uh, these are uh, maybe my favorite. Uh, in, in, uh, I don't know, it's complicated, but yeah. I mean, I do know actually, these, these are the, the reflection of the, the, of the German soul, in a way. Here we have religion, we have the New Age, atheism and pan-psychism on the left, paganism, evola and cosmotheism on the right, Christianity is in the middle, uh, and finally philosophy, which consists in grasping the whole process. So that's really, I, I, I drew this a few days ago. Uh, really, it's simplified to the utmost. It's really Hegelian philosophy uh, made as accessible as possible. And I cannot, I cannot simplify more without sacrificing, uh, I wouldn't say rigor, but without sacrificing intelligence, basically. I cannot, I cannot simplify more. I tried. That's the reason why I made this video in the first place, to talk about my previous video about logic. Uh, I have come to a point where I have tried to, and I still do, and I will still, as long as I publish video, I will try to make my thought as accessible as possible. That's why I draw symbols. I try to make videos in which I sing. I will no longer sing, or maybe I will, I, I don't know, but I will put... The, the, the links to songs, I expect people to, to at least to listen to these songs when I do. But basically, I've had a crisis, uh, 
couple of days ago. Uh, I will not sacrifice intelligence as long as I can speak relatively say in a sane way because basically what I could say to people and I have done this uh, if, if it's too complicated uh, if uh, Hegel although I, I, I downgrade the level to, to really the most basic if, if even the most simplistic explanation are not are too difficult Maybe because of uh, maybe because of this, I don't know. Uh, basically, I can I cannot uh, I cannot simplify even more. And I have had uh, maybe I still do, I don't know what I call nihilistic tendencies, where I just say to myself. But actually, I will resist nihilism as long as I can, and I will keep, uh, I will keep, uh, I will keep. I, I, that, that's how I am. Uh, when I can, when I can speak in a relatively calm manner, I spontaneously try to to develop and to use categories, which I haven't done in this video because I am tired. Uh, it's uh, 1 a.m. Uh, uh, in, in the morning and I haven't slept yet. But basically, uh, um, um, I, uh, I, I will I will just conclude by a, a return to empiricism. conversations that I've had with what I call empirical people it made me realize that because when I speak uh, to people which I don't do very often maybe uh, 20 minutes each day maximum I, I try to talk about the categories and basically uh, I don't know what to say I just realized uh, by, by empirical uh, conversation that I had traveled so far from ordinary consciousness over the past uh, six years. I have accumulated so much knowledge without being aware for the reason that I, I almost had no conversation for, uh, for more than, than 12 years. I haven't realized And because I've had uh, the leisure, in a way, uh, to, to accumulate, to read books, to watch videos, to think. And, uh, yeah. Uh, 
I will conclude by saying that basically uh, I am the only one as of now, and maybe forever, because the, to know that basically th there is only one, one world, there is only one being, there is only one mind, there is only one spirit, there is only one of us, and uh, yeah. And the reason why the one has been or is or or is separated uh, well is because of me, but here I know myself, I know what I am philosophically and and religiously, but I do not understand how. how the world can emerge out of the one uh, I do not really understand but uh, yeah but uh, I will uh, I don't know. I, I don't think that I will post the video uh, in the coming. Uh, actually, I can't because I have to to uh, to to upload the video. But I will sleep for a couple of hours. Then I will publish the video. Uh, then I will keep working. Uh, but. Um, Yeah, I uh I will stop the video now and uh, I said uh, what I wanted to say basically. I I cannot basically I cannot simplify more. I w I will keep producing video as long as as long as I can and trying to to be ever more rigorous while being ever more accessible to mix the tools by using examples, illustrations, etc, etc, to, to work on the, to improve as long as I can. But in this video is really uh, talking randomly in a way. But yeah, but what I want to say is that uh, I, I cannot simplify uh, more because if it's, if it's even more simple, uh, there is no no point of thinking, no point of reflecting. It's just okay. There is God, there is a process, there are problems. Whatever. I will share my light as long as I can and uh, when I when I when I run out of light I will improvise and I will suffer and uh, whatever but uh, yeah I uh, I will um I will do what I think is right and uh, knowing that uh, the opposite uh, whatever whatever but yeah I will start there for now and I will continue uh, on my other channel probably uh, tomorrow or 